Joining me right now is associate head coach and defensive coordinator for your Houston Texans, Lovey Smith. Coach, I got to start with this. I know you've probably been asked this, but I would love to know myself. I know our listeners would love to know why Houston and why the Texans? Well, John, uh, you, you probably know I'm from this state. I'm a product of Texas high school football. So, and I've had an opportunity to coach in a lot of great places uh, with a lot of good people. But uh, the opportunity to be a part of Coach Cully's first staff back here in my home state, uh, that was an opportunity that uh, just really excited about and couldn't pass up. Coach, you mentioned David Cully, and we talked to him about bringing you on and the relationship you had. What was the impact of David Cully on your decision to bring you here? And what's that relationship been like over the years, getting to know David Cully, the two of you now joining forces here in Houston? Well, John, that's what, I mean, experience does teach you an awful lot. You've come and had a chance to uh, be around a lot of people. And uh, my time, you know, getting to know David early on, I mean, he was one of the good guys with a bright mind, was really good at, uh, you know, at what he did. I'm talking about his position, offensive football. Uh, so that, you know, initially it, it was just that part right there. And, you know, we're in this business to win. And to be a part of uh, a rebirth, uh, you know, of our program here, of getting it back on top, uh, and to help David too do that. And and when somebody get their first staff and they ask you to be a part of it, I mean, that's uh, that's pretty special. And uh, since we've been down here, is everything I thought it would be and wanted it to be is exactly how it's gone. Well, I can imagine you don't get great barbecue in Tampa Bay or Illinois, but you definitely do here in Houston. I'll make you feel at home. Coach, when we all found out, and when I say we, I mean fans, people in Houston, analysts, football people, et cetera, found out you were going to be the head coach, immediately people went, oh, 4-3 Tampa 2, and the Texans last year were more 3-4, and before that 3-4. Is there too much made of the difference between the two schemes of being a 3-4 versus being a 4-3? Is it more homogenized now in the NFL? How do you kind of look at that situation uh, because that's obviously something you ran with success earlier in your career as an NFL defense coordinator. Is there too much made of the difference between the two nowadays? Yeah, I, I, I guess in a way, but uh, maybe not too much is made of it. I mean, you're still dealing with seven guys that are primarily a part of the, uh, you know, the front. Uh, looking at it that way, there are some similarities, but uh, there are some basic philosophical things that I believe in. First off, I've uh, every year I've been in football, I've coached from a, a, a basic four, three front. So I really have a belief in it. And it's what you believe in as much as anything. Um, I believe in having four, four defensive linemen that uh, most of the time they're working on things that defensive linemen do. That's important to me. There's a profile that we have at every position from our four, three. And it, there's a group, you look in the NFL now, John, probably about half of us feel that way. Uh, you talk to a three, four guys, they, I, I see a reason why they like to do it. So I just know that this is what we believe in. We feel real good about putting the personnel together to be able to run it. Besides the scheme, and we've watched for a long time, the players you've been able to, to cultivate over the years, coach, and the defenses you've been able to put together. But if you take the scheme out of it, in your estimation, what's the one thing that your defense has to be able to do or has to have to turn the corner and be a great defense in the NFL? And, and I, I think you're hitting on the, on the main point. I mean, you could take schemes. There's a lot of good schemes. But to me, what it comes down to is what else do you do? I still believe in the basic fundamentals of football, the team with the best fundamentals win, the team that plays the hardest. I know it's the NFL. But you can have you can be an NFL and have a college mentality, high school mentality of just playing hard, getting guys to buy into that. And as I say, it being fundamentally sound. And the next component, though, I think you have to have the object of the goal is to win football games. And of course, to win, you have to score points. I think you can have that same mindset on the defensive side. One area of improvement that we have to make here with the Houston Texans. We had nine takeaways last year. You can't win football games that way. There will be an emphasis on it daily by play to get to get better in that area. Yeah, no doubt. 
Coach, you last few years, last four or five years, you're coaching in college, and we, we talk about this a lot. I, I do because I've followed college football for a long time. For a long time, there were distinct differences. There's a college game, there's an NFL game, and you'd watch them, and they didn't look similar. Now they start to look a little similar because the NFL has taken some of the things that they did in college and brought it to the NFL and brought it to their offenses. How do you think your years in the last few years, four or five years in college, will help you be a better NFL defensive coordinator nowadays? Well, John, I thought before I came back to college when I was in the NFL, um, I, I was asked, is there a big difference between college and NFL? I didn't think that there was. I thought some of the same reasons why you win in college, you win in the NFL. Going back from the NFL to the college game, I, I, I can just reaffirm what I initially thought. Uh, you mentioned earlier, I think there are a lot more things that you can, that are being done in college mm -hmm. uh, and primarily the, what you do with the quarterback. Yes. You know, the NFL, the quarterback doesn't run. He's not a base part. Him running the, the football isn't something you deal with as much in NFL. That part of the college game is coming more towards the NFL. So I felt like being in college has really kind of prepared me for this move to come back here as much as anything. But eventually it's going to get, get, get back to uh, blocking, tackling, taking the ball away. No doubt. And, Coach, the draft is coming up. I would imagine – that you're somebody that our scouting personnel wants to talk to because you've coached some players, but you've also coached against some players directly. How has that helped impact kind of the draft uh, discussions leading up that they can go to you and say, hey, coach, can you tell us about this player you coached or this player you coached against the last few years in the Big Ten? Well, experience helps you an awful lot. And that experience that I've had, had in the college game uh, you know, you know, I'm coming from the Big Tens, great football there throughout and four or five years in college football. I do know a lot of the players and it's pretty neat, John, really. A lot of the yeah. guys that I'm evaluating now, <laughs> some of my own players and a yeah. lot of guys that I've coached even through free agency. You know, we signed uh, Desmond King. You know, I remember yeah. all these guys I've coached yeah. against yeah. and I knew them then. And now I see also how they develop as an NFL player. I think that helps me an awful lot too. But that is neat to be in a situation where I do have some insight. You're always trying to get insight on players. And I feel like, and not just me, there are some others on our staff coming in from the college game can, can help with that. Coach, this one it might be a little tricky, but I played for my dad many, many years ago. And when I coached for a while, I always wondered what it would be like to coach with my dad. You have that opportunity to coach with your son. What, what, what's that like? It's just the greatest uh, feeling you could have. You know, our, our Houston Cougs just lost a tough game, had an outstanding season. They had a great special on Kelvin Sampson talking about his relationship. His son is on his staff. There's right. a lot of us that have an opportunity, that have had an opportunity to coach with our son. And just think about this. You know, with a lot of the coaches, you know, you leave and you go home. When you have a family member like that, you're talking football always. I know Miles in, in, in particular, who will be coaching our linebackers here, everything I know on football, he's been around, you know, for the last 10 years or so. He's been – he's seen it exactly how we want to do all things. So, I think it's a great – on a personal note, uh, that makes this – move down there even even better to be able to work every day with your son too. I know my dad and I would have been button head to head on the sideline at some point. So uh, I, I hope you guys aren't doing that. I know you guys have been ultra successful being together. Coach, is there, is there a player in your, in the past that you use as an example of what you want young professional players to be? Maybe not the best player you had, maybe not your favorite player, but maybe one that you hold up here and say, look, this is a guy that we look at it and say, he's the one you need to emulate. Is there a player over the, over the years that you kind of use as an example for your young players to try and emulate? You know, John, I'm going to stay away from that question. And here's why. Uh, I was a, when I was a coach for, you know, up north with the Bears, yep. I once answered that question question a certain way and mm -hmm. I talked about a current player that I have who's a Hall of Famer right now sure well that night I got another call from a Hall of Famer <laughs> that I had coached before he said hey lovey I kind of heard what you said on that 
and I'm going to ask it like this. There is, uh, at every position, I think I've been around someone that a young player can benefit from, and I'm going to call on all of those experiences, players that I've coached in the past. And nowadays, you're just a, a button away from being able to see all of the things that I'm talking about. But it's, when you come in new and you bring in cut up from players that have done it the exact way you would want it to be done, that's pretty neat. And that's what we'll have. All the experience we have, the players I've had a chance to coach, I'm going to be – our guys will have an opportunity to see exactly how they became the players that they, they end up being in their career, which was special players. Coach, for this 2021 defense, it's got to come a long way from 2020. It was not very good statistically. A lot of teams ran the ball on us last year. was a very difficult year. I would imagine you've got goals set out for this 2021 defense – is there a goal in particular? You mentioned the turnovers. That's got to improve. But do you have a few other numerical goals or statistical goals that you feel like this defense has to get to to turn the corner and be a really uh, top-notch defense like it's been in years past here? Well, there is a lot of numbers, and, and I, we, we talked about takeaways. But it's a lot more than that. I think when you talk about just good defense, you talk about good offense, offense is going to talk about – you have to be able to stop the run. Sure. I mean, so what we're going to start with just that, stopping the run. If we can play the run better and take the ball away more, be better on third down conversions, things that, that lead to points, that's a good starting spot. And how we're going to comp accomplish that is through competition. You know, I like to talk about a lot of guys by name, but the good thing about a new staff coming in, everybody has a chance to prove exactly who they are. You know, we don't we don't have a, a depth chart that's uh, that's that's written in ink yet. We're going to go with what we see on the football field. That should bring out the best in us all. Coach, you're the best. I'm so glad you're here. I told you before we started that logo looks great. It's a little surreal, I got to admit, but I love seeing it. Coach, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for talking with me, John. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to know when we post new content.